Wilson Morales, BlackFilmandTV.com. Hi, Steve. How are you? Hey, Wilson. Nice to meet you. Good. So now that we're coming into season two, what went into talking about the synopsis without giving it away, knowing it's different from the comic books? Well, I think there's some elements that are the same as the comic, but it was important. There was a lot of material in volume two and a lot of it was sort of non-linear storytelling. So I had to pick a, you know, a section of it and try to tell a whole season of television, 10 episodes in one section of it. And without giving too much away, I mean, I think I, I chose to tell it around the time of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. It was a very tumultuous time. And I picked 10 days there to tell that story of the season, all of season two. You know, you're dealing with the 60s and there's a lot that's going on per character, especially Allison, you know, especially when you think about what's happening in today's world. Mm -hmm. And couldn't have known that when you shot it, but nevertheless, well, how much research went into the characters you're dealing with in a time period that they're dealing with? Uh, a ton of research. So myself and the other writers, we really, we wanted to tell the story of a woman of color in the South in 1963. So it was a really important that we, we get it right. So we did a lot of research and, you know, we, you know, the first time you see Allison, um, she's experiencing a, a place that says whites only on the door. And we wanted to, you know, even though we're dealing with the show and heightened reality, we didn't want to shy away and not do stories about racial intolerance uh, of that time period. So it's important to get it right and to really show what it'd be like for Allison's character to exist then in, in a time of, you know, uh, of, of, you know, which would have been a very complicated time if you were a person of color. You know, when you're dealing per character, you know, and five is the conduit to getting everybody together at some point, you know, uh, as you and the writers are putting it together in terms of like, how much are we going to focus per person as opposed to like, well, he didn't have much to do this season. You know, mm -hmm. is that a challenge when you're talking about per character, especially when you're introducing new characters? Yeah. And I mean, we don't literally sit and say someone got 4%, 5%. Our general rule is we want to tell a very compelling emotional arc and a personal arc for every actor, uh, for every character. And, you know, some episodes have a little more of somebody than the other. And then, you know, we balance it out. But the goal is it's a true ensemble. So we want all seven of the siblings to really have their storylines. And we create these corollary characters for them to bounce off on. You know, but uh, it's hard because if we get too many of those other characters, it's hard to spend time with our people. But, uh, you know, we, we try to find a balance to give everyone some story, uh, to have the same story time. You know, now that we have a season two, that just says that season one took off and it did really well. Do you look at what people are writing about the show in terms of whether or not a, that affects any of the writing in terms of we need to do this with these characters or do something else in terms of maybe the surroundings or the environment? Not really. I mean, I do read a lot about what the fans are saying and I and I love the fans. I don't really let it affect my plan. I mean, I I'm always sort of a year ahead with the plan. Like I, I if we're lucky enough to have a season three, I know what I want to do for season three already. So I'm a little bit ahead of it. Uh, but no, I mean, I respect the fans. I love their input. Ultimately, you know, I talk to Gerard quite a bit and I, I let him know my plan for the season. And, you know, I get his input. That's sort of how I work it. What sort of surprises are we in the store before anybody sees it? Because I'm sure if you're a true fan, you're going to be binge watching it all, all night long. You know? Yes. you know, what should they be expecting or not expecting? I think they should they can expect uh, a bigger season. We dig much deeper into who our characters are. They're put against some very, very um, uh, formidable foes this year. We have some bad guys that uh, they're going to have to deal with. And then, you know, we have these wonderful sort of interpersonal moments between them, uh, punctuated by a lot of fun, a lot of comedy, and a lot of zaniness this year. Uh, and a lot of action, I think, you know, it is a very binge bingeable show this year. I think people are going to go through it fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously, you know, when, the, you know, the, the thought process is that's going to do well, and do you already have in your mind what potential season three could be like? I do. If we're lucky enough to get a season three from Netflix, I have a pretty good idea what I want to do for the season. I've, you know, I left the show on a very big cliffhanger. I won't say what it is, but it's a huge cliffhanger like season one. Season two ends on a great cliffhanger. And I know where I would take that cliffhanger in season three. Steve, it's been good talking to you. Stay safe. We we'll look you forward too. to talking to you. Take care. Take care.